The year was 1913. Researchers are feeding one group of rats milk and another group of rats fats from lard and olive oil. The researchers found the rats fed lard and olive oil were weaker and developed night blindness, while the rats fed dairy grew stronger and had better night vision. The researchers connected the reason for this was due to vitamin A. A because it was the first vitamin we discovered. As the years continued, more and more of these vitamins and minerals were being found and being linked to specific functions within the body. By 1954, biochemist Frederick Stare coined the term micronutrients to distinguish the small molecules needed for human growth and repair. <laughs> Who cares about micronutrients? When to lose weight and be healthy, the general media says what matters most is to count your macros. We must cut calories to lose body fat. Protein is one of the most important things if you have a goal of weight loss. Calculate your calories in order to lose weight. Cut carbs. Calorie deficit. More protein. Cut calories. You need to be burning more than you are consuming every single day. When it comes to weight loss, or just living a healthy life in general, the emphasis is usually on calories, or how much protein to eat, or how little carbs to have. But here's the dealio. I currently eat around 2,500 calories in a day, a normal day of eating for me may look something like this, two cups of raw milk, vitamin D3, K2, and electrolytes for breakfast, pound of ground beef, ounce of liver, ounce of raw cheese, and cod liver oil for lunch, followed by a half a pound of salmon, two eggs cooked in butter, and magnesium for dinner, and my dessert is usually a cup of raw yogurt and piece of fruit. Now, I'm not saying this is what I eat every day, this is just one of the kind of days I would normally eat. So you can see my macros are usually around 170-ish grams of protein, 60 carbs, 170 grams of fat, and 2,500 calories. However, if the only thing that matters is calories, then I could get similar calories from a day of eating where I have two Eggo waffles with a tablespoon of butter and some powdered sugar on top, two slices of bacon, and an apple for breakfast. Grab a Starbucks coffee frappuccino on the way to work, a quick lunch, a protein shake with some peanut butter inside, and then some snacky things like watermelon, a cucumber, and some Doritos chips. Midday snack on some raisins. Home from work, make a chicken salad, cooking the chicken in some canola oil with some lettuce, radishes, beets, carrots, crudes, croutons, cheddar cheese, and vinegar on top of the salad with two slices of garlic Texas toast and a Sprite. Then for dessert, four Oreos, and boom, I've got very similar calories. But I'm likely not gonna feel very good after that day of eating. I know, some of y'all are thinking, well, of course you're having a bunch of sugar and processed foods that have toxic ingredients and nasty chemicals in them. So even though I was having 2,500 calories, if I'm getting it from junky junkies, I'm likely gonna feel like doo-doo. Yes. Also though, some people will say I'm not doing a fair comparison because with my macronutrients, I'm having a lot less protein and way more carbs in my processed foods example. So we're not really comparing apples to apples here. Okay, you got good eyes, I see you. Well, I could still get the same calories, protein, carbs, and fats by eating a pound of chicken, three tablespoons of honey, and seven tablespoons of butter. And I'm still gonna have a hard time losing weight and feeling great because, a hey, drum roll please. I'm not getting all of my micronutrients. If we compare the micronutrients from what I actually eat in a day versus the processed food diet versus the chicken honey butter diet, you can see how the chicken honey butter diet is low in vitamin B1, B2, B12, folate, vitamin C, D, E, K, calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, potassium, sodium, and zinc. But that's it. So you'd think, well, you didn't have enough variety. What you needed was more variety. Well, if we go back to our processed food diet, holy mackerel, you would think with the salad, I'd be getting like everything. If we took the chicken away from the salad, this is what our salad provides us. WTF, I don't make the rules here, okay? With the processed food diet, not only am I spending a bunch of time grocery shopping for this whole long list of foods, creating all these different meals, I'm also not getting much out of the food nutritionally. Even though I was eating tons of variety, I still was very much nutrient deficient. I basically just took my money and put it down the potty. It's a ripoff, I wouldn't do it. 
Nutrients isn't just macros, proteins, fats, and carbs. It's also micronutrients, vitamins, and minerals. And weight loss is a hormonal process. And so it's going to be much harder for me to balance my hormones if I'm constantly deficient in one of these critical micronutrients. Or same thing, even if my goal is not weight loss and I just want to live a healthy life, have lots of energy, heal psoriasis, have lots of testosterone, have a regular menstrual cycle, grow my hair, just feel good in general, it's going to be much harder to have that happen if I'm chronically deficient in one of these critical micronutrients. Every micronutrient has a specific role in the body. Vitamin A is crucial for maintaining good vision. Calcium is vital for strong bones and teeth. Selenium supports the thyroid. Magnesium helps with nerve function. Zinc fixes damaged tissues. Iron is needed to produce energy. Every micronutrient has a specific function. So kind of who cares if I can hit my macros if that means I'm still going to be missing and be deficient in one of these important micros. Now there's debate on how much of each micronutrient someone would need to have to be healthy and especially if someone's trying to heal they may require more of a specific or many different micronutrients especially the difference between male and female we're going to require different amounts of stuff though i think just kind of a good first place to start is by using the rdas the recommended daily allowance again some people they're going to say the rdas are not very accurate and i do not think these are the perfect guidelines but they're just likely a good estimate on where to start to hit the minimum amount of these vital nutrients i think I think this is where health gurus Gurus just sounds like a booger to me, but the health experts mess up because by telling people to focus on their macronutrients, well, you still may not feel very good if you're not getting in your micros. But if the conversation was hit your micronutrients, you'd inevitably likely hit your macros. I actually spent several hours today plugging and playing different food combinations to see which way I could get all of the micronutrients in the right amounts for the least amount of calories possible, which the singular food highest per 100 grams in vitamin A is beef liver. Vitamin C, camo camo berry. Vitamin D, wild caught salmon. Vitamin E, wheat germ. Vitamin K, collard greens. B1, nutritional yeast. B2, beef liver. B3, nutritional yeast with beef liver being second. B5, nutritional yeast with beef liver second. B6, nutritional yeast with beef liver second. B7, egg yolks. B12, beef liver. Folate, beef liver. Calcium, parmesan. Copper, beef liver. Choline, chicken liver. Iodine, seaweed and shellfish. Iron, goose liver with duck and beef liver being second, magnesium, pumpkin seeds, manganese, mussels, phosphorus, parmesan cheese, potassium, spinach, selenium, wild caught salmon, sulfur, eggs, and zinc oysters. Hey, like I said, I spent several hours playing with different food combinations, trying to figure out which food combination could give me all of the micronutrients without supplementation, which I don't know if we're considering nutritional yeast a supplement, but I'm just going to go ahead and count it as food for this video. But it looks like two ounces of beef liver, three ounces chicken liver, one tablespoon nutritional yeast, four ounces of wild caught salmon, two ounces Parmesan cheese, one ounce pumpkin seeds, one orange, a half tablespoon wheat germ oil, one banana, a teaspoon of salt, a cup of white potatoes, and four cups of collard greens hits all of the micronutrients for 1200 calories, which I don't know who's eating four cups of collard greens and not getting a kidney stone from all the oxalates. But like I said, I was just trying to get all the micronutrients, get the magnesium in without supplementation and for the least amount of calories, which four cups of collard greens is only only 100 calories, plus or minus a kidney stone. Now, before everybody and their mamas starts eating this 1200 calorie micronutrient packed lineup of foods, I would not do that. There's three main reasons I wouldn't eat this 1200 calorie food concoction every single day. One, I would not eat four cups of collard greens, Buddha belly, stinky gas, stomach pain. With collard greens, they are very high in an anti-nutrient called oxalates. And I just posted a whole video on oxalates. So if you're unfamiliar with what they are and what they can cause when having too many, I'll link that in the video description. Secondly, I wouldn't have five ounces of liver every single day because even though it's a nutrient powerhouse and I do like the taste of liver, there is such a thing as eating too many nutrients. What you talking about, huh? Yeah, nutrient toxicity, baby. Now, to be fair, I don't believe the problem is having too many nutrients. I think the problem happens from having an imbalance in nutrients. For example, liver is very high in vitamin A. And so if my vitamin A levels are up here and all of my other fat soluble vitamins and minerals are down here, now I'm creating an imbalance in my body. So I could either have less vitamin A or have more of these fat soluble vitamins and minerals to 
keep the body in balance. So I believe having lots of nutrients is great, but the imbalance is where the problem can happen. Also, I don't think people have to eat liver, but if someone's going to eat liver, then I think an ounce a day is plenty. I don't actually eat an ounce of liver a day. I do sit down and just eat four ounces at a time at different increments throughout the month. So in a month, I eat like 30 ounces of liver. So therefore my daily average is an ounce a day, but I just break it up differently when I eat it throughout the month. Cool. The third reason I wouldn't eat this 1200 calorie micronutrient rich food concoction every single day is because it's not enough calories. I know I said that if you focus on hitting your micros, you'd easily likely be able to hit your macros. And that's still true. This is just a very extreme example where I'm purposely intentionally trying to find the way to get the least amount of calories as possible because I'm trying to emphasize a point here, y'all, okay? I do offer health coaching and the majority of people who come to see me initially are eating 1200 calories and they're not eating this lineup of foods. So they're likely deficient in one of the very important micros nutrients. If someone were to eat this 1200 calorie lineup, I think the protein's fine, carbs can be fine, the fat is pretty low, so fat's really good for our hormones and our brain function, and in general, fats and carbs are our energy source. They are the fuel source for the body, and therefore I think this 1200 calorie lineup would likely make someone feel pretty low energy, fatigue, pretty tired, and their metabolism would go down the drain. So yes, macronutrients are important, though again, I think if someone were to focus on hitting their micronutrients, micronutrients, they would hit their macronutrients no problem. This is just one of those very extreme examples. Also, I don't think someone has to hit every single vitamin and mineral every single day in the right amounts. I would care more about my weekly total. So for example, if today I'm lower in B1, but I know later this week I'm going to have pork chops for dinner, then I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. But this is why I have a lot of variety and I rotate through different foods. One day I'll have oysters, next day I'll have salmon, next day chicken, then pork, then brisket, and I rotate through different kinds of foods to get an array of different nutrients. Now I know I don't actually have that much variety in comparison to the average person. However, going back to my processed food day of eating, I had a lot of variety and I still was deficient in micronutrients. So by variety, I don't really, I just mean to get all the micronutrients in whatever way you can that doesn't hurt you. Because again, eating four cups of collard greens may be asking for some pain. I recognize nowadays eating isn't just about what nutrients we can derive from food. Eating is a social, cultural, and celebratory thing. I don't just eat only for nutritional purposes. I will also partake in these different non-nutrient specific events in life as well. And I don't think if someone eats a food that's low in nutrients, it's that big of a deal. Though, if someone's eating low nutrient foods for breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner, dessert, every single day of the year, they're likely not going to feel their best. I'd suggest if someone's trying to lose weight or in general, if someone's goal is not weight loss and they just wanna feel healthier and feel more vibrant, then what I would do is I would track my micronutrients for seven days and I wouldn't change how I'm eating. I would eat what I normally eat for seven days and then I would look for trends to see where I'm low, missing, or deficient in certain micronutrients. If every single day I was low in iron, then instead of me cutting calories to lose weight, I may just need to improve having more iron because once my body has all of the micronutrients it needs, it can start regulating and balancing its hormones hormones, and I may lose weight by just improving my deficiencies. Now granted, I don't track my micros or my macros because at this point I have a better understanding of what I'm getting from the food I eat. So I don't want people to think they have to forever the rest of their life track. I don't do that, but tracking can be a helpful tool where people can learn what am I getting out of these foods. If I have one egg versus four eggs versus two eggs and two slices of bacon, what do I get out of these foods? So I think tracking for a week or a month can just be very helpful and then eventually the goal being to not track. The website I use to track vitamins and minerals is called Chronometer. It's free. I'm not affiliated with them, so I'm sure there's other websites where you can figure all these vitamins and minerals out as well. This is just the one I use. And I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, like I said. So if you want help with how to structure your meals, ask more questions, how to lose weight, then I'll link my coaching packages in the description. Don't be silly, subscribe to Lily, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.